Доброго дня. Good good morning. My name is Nit. Litra, I will allow myself the liberty to speak Russian because it's more convenient to me. The topic for today's press conference is very close to me. Honestly speaking, taking consideration that I used to live in Moldova for some time, and I really it's it's very close to my heart. I mean, what's going on there, even today. And we have a very strong, powerful panel today because we have the report prepared by my co colleague uh, Alain Petli from the Institute of um, uh, World Policy. And also uh, we have two distinguished speakers, the most suitable, I would say, speakers for the discussion of this specific issue. And we are talking about uh, Ruslan Babachano, the ambassador of Moldova to Ukraine, and Mr. Valery Zhovtenko, ambassador at large for special missions of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine. Before I uh, turn the mic uh, for the presentation of our study, I would like to say that uh, more often than not, unfortunately, the um, the the relations between Ukraine and Moldova are underestimated, in my opinion, and there are certain things which you know you, have, you know when which forced me to ask myself a question. For example, reading the information on the website of the border state border guard service of Ukraine, I came to know that a couple of years back. Uh, between Ukraine and Moldova is the second largest, uh, longest uh, border um, uh, after Russian Federation in Ukraine. Uh, then uh, come Belarus, Poland, and other countries. So we're talking about one more than 1,200 kilometers. Uh, this is a very important component. And uh, number two, and you can read that in the uh, report, and I believe Elena is going to talk about that as well that between Ukraine and Moldova we have, uh, you were talking about our relations between Ukraine and Moldova, we are, can talk about all the types like political, economic, ecological, transport related, security related, etc., etc. So those relations um, have rather serious content. And that's why uh, it's worthwhile to pay more attention to these relations. And since this topic is very close to me, and I can talk for a long time about that, but at this point of time, I'll give the floor to Alena. Good morning to everybody, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, esteemed guests, you know. First of all, I have to thank the Institute of World Policy for the opportunity given to me to write such a report of the study, as we say, before you write something, can be some paper cannot understand, which pertains and which holds for the Ukraine-Moldovan relations. This is the 14th already presentation of the of such report, and uh, within the framework of a project which we have been implementing for a year now, uh, under the one specific uh, Institute of World Policy, and, and uh, also we are going to take uh, into account the Ukraine Polish, Ukraine Lithuania, and other relationships. So, the, by the end of the year, we'll have um, some other opportunities to meet here and, and discuss those issues. Speaking about Moldova, you know, there is something to compare those relationships. Um, I mean, that not recently uh, we made a presentation here dedicated to the Ukraine Belarusian relations, another neighboring country, I mean, Belarus. And, um, I had, uh, we have to state that in Ukraine there is lack of interest uh, towards Belarus and the, the experts, so there's not enough experts um, who are real well worse in Belarus relations. And again, we have to rely on ourselves so on, the, um, on the attainments and achievements of the World Policy Institute, who has been working for a number of years on the Ukrainian Moldova relationships, as, especially we are talking about the potential settlement of the Transnistrian conflict, and I call upon everybody to contribute to our efforts, because this is still topical issue now, and 
and it was very comfortable for me to work within the on, on, on uh, the, the premises of the world institution and we had a very good team and we want to write a very serious um, a study to again it's up to you to uh, evaluate whether it was uh, good or not but speaking um, after my communication with many of the experts in the purposes of uh, preparation of this study what I liked really was very much that uh, there was there were no indifferent persons and there a lot of persons took that this issue close to their hearts and there were been the ones that in the end of the analysis we could switch over to a different level of our relationship between the two countries after the disintegration of the former USSR, so we had this is in the agenda, you know, the demarcation of the borders and whatever pertains to the intellectual pr property, so uh, what we still have from the uh, beginning of the 1990s of the last century and uh, all the way up to our cooperation. So in this context of the blank, to say that uh, I could not forget about uh, the idea that Ukraine and Moldova relations uh, uh, lack some lack some vision. I'm not a visioner, so to say. I'm not very much carried away about kind of um, uh, vision, uh, start or whatever. But I believe this is very important for our relationship, our relations with the, uh, with, Mol with Moldova, just to see. Uh, to see into the future, to look into the future in five, ten years from now, where we are moving uh, towards what? I mean, we are moving towards the European space, at least has been declared, and Ukraine and Moldova, with different degree of success or in different tempo, they try to implement this plan, and they are actually trying to introduce the FTA agreement so that uh, the kind of pro European. Uh, gravitation is a common thing to us. Why, why, why shouldn't we look into the future five and ten years ahead of us and to think about the space of those countries who already signed the association agreement or the Eastern uh, Neighborship part neighbor, neighbor, uh, Partnership um, Program with the uh, relevant uh, customs procedures and control over the border, etc., etc., which pertains to the supremacy of law and the uh, relevant uh, legislative or legal framework. And we need the uh, understanding where we are moving uh, to, uh, and, and we have to think about our common space and how we can um, support each other, Moldova, Ukraine, Ukraine, Moldova. You know what we also lack? Uh, the kind of vision uh, in Ukraine of you know, the Ukraine gender regarding Moldova, what we can uh, offer to Moldova, and following up uh, how the um, the Ukraine Moldovan relations are going to last today. So they are talking about the new elections, or first coming elections. Maybe the new president of Moldova will be the pro-Russian one in Transnistria, and what would be the relationship between the two countries? And that we have to think what you, in Ukraine they think about Moldova, and uh, all whatever many issues in this study uh, actually relate to this issue. While analyzing our bilateral cooperation, we start with different indicators in order to understand the bilateral relation between Ukraine and Moldova. All those are uh, the common indicators. We can see the intensity of the uh, of the relation between the people and crossing the border, border crossing, the number of crossing of the border crossings, uh, and how many people cross the border, etc., etc. We are talking about the, these relations between the two countries, the number of the Ukrainians going to Moldova, um, uh, you know, the number of those people, in, uh, the, uh, this is the fifth. Uh, Poland, Russia, Hungary, uh, number four is Moldova. If you uh, take the um, reverse direction, or the, I mean, uh, how many Moldovans come to Ukraine, this is uh, uh, the country number four, which testifies to the uh, possibility of tracking the relations between the countries. Another uh, story, uh, you know, in our study, we, uh, we paid attention to the based on the polls of the Ukrainian and Moldovan citizens, we asked them, how do you assess the, uh, the level um, of cooperation? We are talking about the intergovernmental relations. So about 50% of the respondents believe that the relationship are developing a very, uh, you know, a good, a good level. Um, uh, you know, Moldova with, with the EU, with Romania, United States, then Ukraine, and then Russia, despite whatever else, because Ukraine, 
um, could be could occupy a higher place, but we understand why because we still have this uh, kind of the um, negative consequences of some issues which are dis uh, outstanding, non resolved, ecological issues associated with the Nistri, with the demarcation of the borders, with the potential support of uh, by Ukraine of Kishinev uh, during the settlement of the conflict in Transnistria. So on the other hand, we, we uh, assess the evaluation of Ukrainians. You were talking about Moldova, so our social poll a mm, questionnaire include the issue how would you assess this situation so in june 57 percent of the respondents in ukraine are neutral so to say against uh, which means that the intensity of um, the year uh, attitude is not that high because many people do not have this direct contact with their, with their counterparts so um, but 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 let's say the attitude towards Moldova is rather warm, so to say, as uh, different from the, our attitude towards Russia, for example. And maybe we need a more close cooperation on the interhuman and the relationship between the people. Maybe we more 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 attention should be paid by the uh, NGOs and political centers because if we are talking about the European agenda. Uh, which the Ukraine and Moldova respectively work on. This is a very good field and the area for this joint co uh, common context, joint project, from, um, projects, and the trips to 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 the, to these two countries. And this is something which we can further develop, despite the general political agenda and how uh, what would be the outcome of the uh, forthcoming presidential elections. In the first tour is over in, in uh, Transnistria. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and this will be the way. I mean, we are expecting the first two results uh, on the 30th of October this year. But the activity which we witness in our bilateral uh, um, cooperation gives us the grounds for optimism. We believe that the, uh, some of these will be settled in the nearest future, I hope. And I also um, hope that in Ukraine, in the end of the day, I'm not talking now about the Minister of Foreign Affairs, they're working uh, quite well, but again, uh, we're talking about some kind of engagement of the thoughts, whatever else. And they do a, a lot in order to, um, uh, to, to, to to make some progress in our relationship. But, uh, you know, um, one of the guys told me uh, about Moldova for Ukraine is kind of the small finger uh, we do not pay attention to, to that until something happened to this small finger. But we understand that we cannot neglect Ukraine and Moldovan cooperation. And uh, sometimes I heard uh, communicating with uh, governmental figures from our other ministers, they say, you understand that Moldova doesn't, uh, it's not number one country, we you know we have a lot of other problems, and I say that you have to understand that the, in the case of Moldova, it's kind of a package of pro uh, approach, either everything or nothing, you know, so we have to to, to move together, we have to uh, to resolve the ecological, political, uh, and uh, energy-related um, uh, problems together, and we are moving on a daily basis, uh, considering all the issues all together, I mean, um, all, all in a package. So this is my brief kind of introduction. So should you have any questions, maybe later can ask those. Thank you, Elena. Uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, Olena already touched upon several uh, issues of the bilateral relations, which are in the way of our further development of our relationship or relations. Maybe you can give us some prospects or some uh, future picture uh, how uh, how quickly Ukraine and Moldova can resolve the issues regarding related the um, uh, demarcation of the borders and the ecological issues, etc. Dear friends, esteemed colleagues, it's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, first of all, I would like to 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 thank um, the uh, World Policy Institute for the invitation extent to me to participate in this very important uh, function. Uh, today, uh, several I would like to thank Elena uh, for this, uh, let's say, um, uh, very detailed uh, assessment of the prospects for development of Ukraine-Moldova relations, for your information, for your vision, for your recommendations. Very briefly, I'll try to talk about the present-day 
status of our relations, relations and the prospects for the, their development. As you know, of late, over the last year, the political dialogue between our countries reached a new qualitative level and the positive outcomes and results of uh, the meetings of our Prime Minister and our President several weeks ago at the border between the countries are the very graphic. Um, the confirmation of uh, what I said, we have a very efficient political dialogue on the intergovernmental level and we plan for the nearest future in the next in the several times, you know, once we are going to organize a meeting between the prime ministers or the co-chairman of the Intergovernmental Commission, which will take place in several weeks from now in Chisinau, it's very important that we have a very good intensive dialogue on the level of the ministers of foreign affairs. Our minister uh, twice, uh, I mean, the minister of foreign affairs twice visited Ukraine. Uh, from Moldova, I mean, uh, over the last few months, and we share corroborates that we have a very high level of dialogue on the, on the intergovernmental level. This creates all the necessary prerequisites for the possibility, and Alona was very aptly mentioned that, to resolve some of the already old issues, outstanding issues, uh, on our agenda to, let's say, to, to close this page in our relationship and move ahead. Well, speaking about where we are now, it's my pleasure to say that during this year they resumed the uh, bilateral consultation to, between the ministers of ecology after the gap of several years, unfortunately. Next week we are going to have another round of such negotiations. Our minister of ecology will visit Chisinau. As you, we were talking about demarcation of the borders, practically we reached the the last lap, the last period of our uh, stage of our um, uh, the discussion, we have to prepare the final documents. I believe that in the nearest future, within the next year perhaps, we'll be able to complete this process and sign the agreement regarding the uh, national frontiers regime. Speaking about the, um, the intellectual property, we also have the positive uh, results here, we had a, a positive round of negotiations a couple of months ago, uh, which were held in Kiev. Next round of talks is planned to be held in Kishinev. So in all the directions, we have positive dialogue and constructive cooperation, which we have reached. Another, uh, one more important point, our cooperation in the uh, power sector and energy sector, we have the draft project for the function of the Dniester uh, Hydrological Power um, uh, Junction, and I believe this is a project on which uh, both countries are working very actively. And I think given the, the, the availability of the political will, we can reach in, uh, the acceptable decision in this sphere. I didn't talk about the ecology, yeah, but it's very important to us to make the Dniester River um, so that this river d does not divide us as the border river, but un uh, should unite us. And we have to prove that uh, we as two different countries who can find compromise. And there are all the necessary prerequisites at this stage of our discussions and negotiations. And I'm positive that we'll be able to do that in the nearest future. We could resolve the old issues and the, and the focus of our attention on those issues. Uh, which unite us mostly. We are talking cooperation in the European integration context, uh, also the improvement of the border um, uh, infrastructure and promotion of the transborder trade. And, and you absolutely uh, rightly said that the, uh, according to the number of the, the people coming to Ukraine, Moldova takes the first place, more than 4 million well, citizens of Ukraine crossed the border of Ukraine last year, which um, testifies to the intensity of our relations and, uh, um, and it emphasizes the role of Ukraine as a neighboring country for the Republic of Moldova, which is a very important and positive thing. And immediately I would like to emphasize that the development of strategic uh, good neighborly relations in the context of the European integration is one of the top priorities in the foreign policy of the government of the Republic of Moldova. This is really very important, and we revert a lot of attention to this. Uh, also, I would like to say a few words about the 
uh, trade and economic relationship between the countries. Unfortunately, last year we had some difficulties. Our bilateral uh, commodity turnover drastically dropped, but it's, uh, it's good that uh, we, um, during our efforts we managed to, uh, to, to reach some positive um, changes in this uh, specific regard. Uh, there is a, uh, we increased the turnover commodities between the two countries. We organized two bilateral business forum in Kishinev. Next week, it's my pleasure to announce about that. In the Chernobyl, we are going to have tripartite a business forum um, uh, Ukraine, Moldova, and Romania, and we try to do everything possible in order to uh, to 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 to, to uh, activate our cooperation, and this is going to be promoted by the, uh, the future um, uh, meeting of the co-chairman for the economic um, relationship. They they also are the ministers of economy of so our respective countries. I am sh sure that we are going to have very good constructive dialogue during that meeting. Also, would like to emphasize the role of Ukraine in uh, Transnistria conflict through settlement. I believe that my colleague, Mr. Ambassador, will talk more about this specific topic. But to us, it's very important this positive, constructive role played by Ukraine in um, in promoting this um, uh, negotiation pr pr process to settle the Transnistria uh, problem. We do evaluate it highly, and this is very important to us. One of the very important uh, things also, and would like to emphasize that, and Mal our Moldovan colleagues emphasize that, they support the territorial integ integrity and uh, sovereignty of Ukraine, and they um, provide uh, and, uh, the support to those people who suffered uh, as a result of the uh, conflict in the eastern part of Ukraine. And uh, one of the examples, on August 20 this year, 20 children, from the families who became victims of this. Unfortunately, they w w went through the rehabilitation the territory of Moldova, and uh, more than 100, we took some of the more than 100 children from uh, Moldova to our country. So Moldova is a small country that they do whatever they can to help us. Also, we had some the uh, uh, voluntary of the free of charge concerts, in the money which we um, uh, collected uh, for, uh, during those concerts, they were used for the rehabilitation of our children uh, who suffered as a result of the armed conflict. A few words about humanitarian um, aspects of our cooperations were important, I believe. And over the last year, we placed a special emphasis on the necessity to restore the cultural context between the countries. Many Moldovan um, uh, artists and the, uh, let's say, singers and figures of art visited Ukraine and in the nearest future plan to sign two uh, agreements, two programs in the sphere of culture and education. So we are trying to do everything possible to uh, intensify in all the possible trends and directions our relationship. And I'm positive, and Leona uh, was talking about that, that we do have very positive um, uh, uh, prospects in all those um, things. Should you have any questions, it would be my pleasure to answer those. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Before, actually, they are uh, trying to, we are trying to collect the questions. Maybe you can give the floor to Mr. Ambassador Zhevtenko. Maybe you can, in your comment, mention how our relations between the two countries have changed and transformed over the last uh, period of the last few years. Because very often I hear such uh, information that over the last few years, uh, uh, you know, if you're talking about the different um, uh, what changed in our relations, uh, they, 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 there were a lot of different um, events which took place more than the, the, over the last two decades, is, including the uh, possibility of uh, settlement transnistrian conflict. So we have the floor, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Uh, uh, may I welcome all the participants in our event and thank you very much for the invitation extended to me and the very interesting analytical material and information that Alena shared with us. Uh, answering your question, I would like to say that over the uh, the two, almost almost three years now, you know, uh, the world, generally speaking, has changed drastically. And the uh, big contribution to the to, to, to these changes, the transformation was done by the Ukraine Ukraine Ukrainian community. Uh, 
uh, which uh, where we had this what we call the, uh, the revolution dignity, which actually changed situation not only in Ukraine and Europe, but in the globe. In Ukraine, the, uh, made there was impossible to declare itself as a country which actively and dynamically moves into the future. We actually identified our future as a European future, and this is something, uh, in, among other things, which unites us with Moldova. Both Moldova and Ukraine signed the uh, association agreement with the EU, EU. This is our common uh, movement towards Europe and towards the, um, the construction of building our European society in our respective countries, Ukraine and Moldova, which is very important indeed. I would like to mention here what uh, Len already mentioned, uh, there is such a dimension of cooperation with the European Union, which is called Eastern Partnership, and there are three countries which lead the way here, Moldova, Ukraine, and Georgia. Those countries which uh, which uh, the agreement of association with the European Union, those countries, and by the, by the way, Moldova already has a visa-free regime with the European EU, and we, I believe, will soon have the same, uh, like Georgia, and those countries try to move fastly towards the European um, Union and European standards of living. Speaking about our relationship, I have a map in my hand, and I'm looking at the map of, my, of Moldova, very nice map. And, um, and uh, 1,222 kilometers is uh, the second longest state frontier we have with this country after Russia. So what are the most important countries to any country in, if we're talking by lateral relationship? Uh, the, always the neighboring countries. It doesn't matter. And the size of the countries doesn't matter. And people say... Uh, the neighbors are given to us by the Lord of ours, and we have to live with those countries. And we are lucky, uh, with, uh, speaking about Moldova, because we have a good relations with this nice country and as, and as the countries which have a long standing, a long uh, you know, common history and culture and economic development and state, uh, state, uh, state development. Or this period of time, not only we, we establish our certain relationships, we also have the number of different outstanding issues which have not been uh, resolved. And they could not be resolved earlier, but now we take care of resolving those. So if you're talking about the uh, dynamics over the last two plus years, this dynamics differs a lot in a positive meaning uh, from what we had before. I can talk about that with all the... Um, awareness and certainty because I, uh, I was part of the department dealing with among other countries with Moldova and Natalia Serenka is here also uh, working in the same the department with Moldova and she continues to do that so we can testify to the fact that the dynamics are really very positive and very intensive and active coming back to our neighborhood I can I must say that um, we are not so much well, like the neighboring countries, we have very good relations and we we develop them further, looking to, into the future. Uh, and we are talking about the European perspective, as I mentioned before, and the perspective and the prospects for our economic development. If uh, provided we work together in our uh, development in trying to resolve not only our bilateral relationship problem. If we manage to do that, we are going to move towards our, the, our goal faster. I do not want to speak about the detail about our bilateral relationship. Before my colleague Bobachan already spoke about that. But I would like to emphasize that um, uh, quite recently, on October the 6th, we had the meeting between the President of Ukraine, Mr. Poroshenko, and Prime Minister of uh, Moldova, Mr. Philip, we had the, the, that meeting was very warm and constructive, which gave us specific impetus to our further, uh, more fast development, which Mr. Bester mentioned. I'm um, speaking about this meeting, and um, they, they try, we had to try to resolve a number of the outstanding issues, which is still on our agenda in our bilateral relations. And coming back to our cooperation, I would say that the Institute of World Policy does a lot of good things. They try to really with attention, to draw attention to those countries with, whom we, with which we cooperate, in particular, 
Uh, we are talking about the rivet and attention to what is in store for us in the future because our communication and cooperation with our neighboring countries means our future. And also draw attention to those problems. And uh, briefly, I'm going to briefly talk about what we have. Unfortunately, we have the common problems which unite us. Uh, I mean, unresolved or incomplete resolution of the uh, Transnistria conflict on the territory of the Republic of Moldova. And I'm dealing with, this, with those uh, things. And I must say that this year and, uh, they made some progress. For the first time uh, over the last few years, they had this uh, meeting of a plus two format meeting. We are talking about the um, uh, intermediate countries and the countries uh, observers. Uh, they signed the protocol between uh, the, uh, the main management of Moldova and the representatives of the trans of Transnistria, which emphasized the, the most topical problems which have to be resolved, which was fo followed by the Bavarian press conference dedicated to the Transnistria um, uh, um, problem settlement, which testifies to the fact that the uh, presidency of Germany uh, in the uh, in the European Council, uh, they try, they start to rivet a lot of attention to this specific issue, and this uh, they are going to delegate the same um, well, let's say items of importance to the next presidency of Austria, and I believe that we are going to achieve real positive results uh, there. Of in conclusion, I would like to say that Moldova is our friendly neighboring country with which we are trying to develop our positive relations. And we have the common European future with that country, which not only brings us closer to, together, but also demonstrate the example of the friendly relations for other European countries. Thank you, thank you. I would like to open the Q&A session. So please, you have a question, I understand. But please uh, do not forget to introduce yourself and say who address your question. Igor Salavi, Levy Beric newspaper. Um, it was repeatedly stated that Ukraine and Moldova um, jo has joint effort to join European Union and uh, now some concerns are raised because uh, in Moldova there will be presidential elections soon and uh, some of the candidates, they make claims that show that this trend can be reversed. And the question to Mr. Ambassador, whether policy of Moldova change after the election and the question to representative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, how Ukrainian side react on remarks and uh, respond to the remarks of the candidates uh, who uh, question um, territorial integrity of Ukraine. And uh, one more question, uh, Viktali Martinuk, Political San Research Center. Yesterday, it was said that the Obama mission, um, there was information that there will be joint checkpoints in this uh, Transnistria uh, trans, uh, region. And it was said that Transnistria checkpoints will be uh, um, lifted, whether these processes will go p in parallel. So we are going to answer these questions concerning the first question. I cannot comment uh, the claim of the candidate, especially that we are at the last stage. And uh, I want to say that uh, no matter who will be the president of Moldova, and we believe that uh, we will have good relationship, a partner relationship between our countries, that this 
course will be preserved. Official mm, position of Moldova is known. Republic of Moldova supports territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine, and we we value the role played by Ukraine in the process of uh, uh, regulation and settling of Transnistria issue. This is uh, about the first question, about the second one. So maybe Mr. Ambassador will add on this about the joint uh, checkpoints in uh, Transnistria. Uh, so this is a fact on the f 4th of November last year, we signed the joint protocol concerning this to realize the agreement of 1994. Uh, this agreement was made many years ago. And uh, second, for us, it is very important that by joint effort, we should elaborate the model that would simplify the uh, crossing of the border, especially for uh, uh, residents of Transnistria, and uh, that would help to improve the life of uh, economic entities from this region, and also to fight smuggling. And this is an important issue. We work jointly, and uh, maybe this project will be fully implemented. And I would like to stress one more important aspect. We also negotiate with our partners, our colleagues from uh, Transnistria region. And for us, it is important that stability in the region be preserved. The first question I would like to say that the assessment of the claim of the candidate was provided by the embassy and uh, also there was a claim of the minister of, of, of the foreign minister uh, of Moldova and uh, there is no doubt that uh, the issue of territorial integrity and sovereignty we support and defend such rights and uh, as to joint control, as my colleagues said, uh, my uh, colleague said that this uh, agreement was signed, and this agreement envisages the creation of seven points of joint control. We have such practice with Poland. We have uh, joint control points there, and uh, like Chergan, because uh, there is mission to support trans-border cooperation, Yobam, that chose uh, this uh, point as a pilot project with the support of European Union in order to demonstrate the transparency and European standards at Ukrainian and Moldovan border uh, in uh, the area of uh, Transnistria. And uh, you know, in this research, from this research that uh, there are many goods that are crossing this border, especially excise goods. And uh, this project, uh, um, uh, th uh, this is all done in the territory of Ukraine, and uh, it's not about left bank, and uh, this is done in accordance to the standards of the EU. And the terms of introduction of this project depend on cooperation of our border services, Ukrainian and Moldovian, that uh, signed the protocols and uh, on the financial support of the European Union. So I have an optimistic view on this, and we hope that next year it will work. And this is one of the steps on the way to realize the association agreement with the EU and um, free trade with the EU that was signed by Ukraine and Moldova with the European Union. This is our joint work. I would like to comment on the first question. I'm not a diplomat.
I have more f um, area for creativity. And uh, Mr. Uh, Don made a scandalous statement. He is a provocateur. He repeatedly made statements and then rejected them. I want to remind to you that um, he was the Minister of the Economy of Moldova and he wrote a letter to the European Commission and he asked that they should start the association agreement proceedings and uh, and signing and when he became the leader of the Socialist Party he was He was the proponent of cancellation of the association agreement. And then uh, he said that he won't change everything. So it is difficult to believe, to trust such a person. And several days ago in Moldova, there was a short version how to assess elections for the people who do not understand uh, the situation. Uh, just to understand who is the leader in the race, the answer is simple. Igor Trump and Maya Clinton. So uh, if you follow American elections, so such situations appear. So this is a joke, of course, but I think that this joke reflects some aspects of elections. So I am not 100% sure, but there will be second round, and we will follow interesting events. Thank you. One more short comment. We have interest of the media uh, in these elections that will happen on the 30th of uh, August, but uh, we should see it in a broader context. And uh, in the context of experience of uh, Moldova, we can take into account here in Ukraine. These are the lessons to be learned. Moldova, for a long time, was believed one of the most successful country in the uh, integration uh, program, uh, so the uh, association agreement, free trade. So there is story of success that was written by Moldova. If we consider Moldova, Ukraine, and uh, Georgia, because I mentioned Belarus, but um, you know that of course uh, Moldova, Ukraine, and Georgia. So some lessons, uh, we should struggle, we should fight for Euro integration. And we see it now clearly, this is not, as we say, this is about identity. Euro integration requires fight, requires struggle. And uh, we should take into account uh, this, and Euroscepticists will also fight, and uh, Euro integration projects, they are long term liberalization of uh, visa regime. Uh, it is a uh, soft force of the European Union, and we are not speaking that. Uh, uh, due to this, uh, there will be more proponents of the idea of European integration. So that's why we should take into account the experience of Moldova. And another aspect, European integration uh, is difficult in case of uh, um, corrupt society. That's why there is struggle, not because European Union is uh, because there is some disillusion in the processes, because people do different things. And the main idea of campaign is fighting corruption. And I believe that integration of Moldova, uh, they have their own political context. We can ass uh, assess it differently, but European Union, they 
saw this candidate, they chose this candidate, and the politicians can compare these things, and it will be interesting to see how it will be done in Ukraine. And we see that this is done in on the bigger political platform in Ukraine, so we can follow these events, we can see uh, and follow these events connected with candidates, but we should take into account broader Proce uh, processes and to um, take this experience and to consider it here in Ukraine. Natalia, you had a comment, please. Thank you. I have several questions. The first one, so this is the continuation of the first one, but from the other side. We highly assess and we are optimistic about the declaration of the Mr. Ambassador that no matter who wins, there will be partner and friendly rela relationship among our countries. Uh, they will be preserved. But I have a question to Ukrainian specialists, experts, and representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You know that all assessment uh, that uh, the, uh, that uh, Mr. Dodon uh, win. So, what will be the consequences, and what will be further steps? What will be the strategies? Because no uh, matter that he is a provoca provocateur, maybe he is a. a Maybe this is cynicism and pragmatism, but we should work on the course. And you see that he wants to have more relationship with Russia and how it will be reflected on our relationship and on the Transnistria uh, dispute. So what will be the consequences and how to overcome them, and about uh, uh, checkpoints, crossing points. So from the start of EUBA mission, uh, this was in the air from the start of the mission, it, and we can welcome this, and the issue connected with uh, uh, smuggling. EUBA mission did a lot at crossing points and uh, taught uh, uh, customs officers and border uh, guards. Uh, they taught them a lot and they put new equipment, but parallel there was information that the main smuggling um, sources and uh, they reoriented, well, or reoriented uh, into green channels so uh, that there were some routes known and uh, did something change in this? And uh, were, uh, were you able to overcome and to stop this uh, roots of smuggling? Do you have other questions, please, Alona? Alona Gitmanchuk, uh, the Institute of the World Policy. We thank our speakers for uh, spending their time here with us, and uh, uh, Mr. Zhevtanka is here with us, and for him it's a challenge to deal with the um, settling of Transnistria issue, and I have a question to Mr. Zhevtanka. And uh, how did the position of Ukraine change uh, to Transnistria problem uh, in the context of war and uh, did these changes happen, or they were just uh, some corrections? And uh, how uh, how does our position uh, differ uh, from Russian position? And um, that we shouldn't equal uh, LPR, DPR, and uh, uh, Transnistria. So. Um, Okay, I would like to answer the to be the first one to answer your first question uh, regarding the candidates. You know, when a person is a candidate, it comes up with some uh, st uh, statements. When he becomes 
uh, president, she, he or she acts in different way. Um, you, you know, a candidate doesn't have some official uh, uh, responsibilities when he come in, comes into office, uh, the responsibility change. This this is true not only about Ukraine, but Moldova as well. Speaking about whether we have some strategy, MFA is very attentively following what's going on in our neighboring countries, our friendly neighboring countries, and we work on different options, alternatives of the development of our relations, so depending on what's going on inside that or another country. We can tell ourselves a luxury just to work in a very simple way. Number three, uh, well, now it's about the catcher gun checkpoint. Uh, you know, the, the task is very simple. We have to demonstrate that Ukraine and Moldova of um, uh, moving towards the European aggression, they are able to create one crossing point, which would uh, be, uh, which would demonstrate the European approach. As for the um, other aspects, this is the question to be addressed to the law enforcement agencies. And those uh, competent persons, they're doing uh, something where serious steps taken, I mean. And uh, thanks to, I uh, would like to thank Alina Gitmichuk for your question. What's new um, in relation to the uh, uh, tragic um, events in the east of our country do you associate with the aggression of the Russian Federation? Number one, which is very important, and if I'm not mistaken, yesterday our president declared that. We uh, send a very clear signal to the world to the, uh, um, the, to, to the uh, uh, rest of the world that this is clearly aggression and not the, uh, the internal affair. And Ukraine occupies a very specific and clear position, uh, answering question, that the Russian troops must be withdrawn from Transnistria, whether it's a peacemaking contingent or which has to guard the military warehouses and storage areas in Kobasin, it doesn't matter. Number two, um, speaking about the status of Transnistria the, within the Republic of Moldova, this issue, issue should be resolved by the, um, by the government of Moldova and uh, represents Transnistria. It must be bilateral agreement. Of course, intermediaries uh, try to assist them in that, but they are the decision make, make makers in, uh, in compliance with international law and the unchangeable uh, uh, attitude towards the uh, territory integrity and sovereignty of the um, uh, Republic of Moldova. Of course, we can talk about similarities and differences what's going on in Moldova and in, in the eastern parts of Crimea and Ukraine. And sorry, uh, if I say that, that uh, Moldova is lucky, sorry for that word, because they do not have the common border with the Russian Federation. What's going on here, unfortunately, uh, we have the common uh, border for, uh, with the Russian Federation, long one and 400 kilometers of the border is uncontrolled by us. This is a very serious problem, which is on the table of the Minsk uh, negotiators, Minsk group, and other, um, and I, and I, I am positive that we will find the way how to resolve this problem in a diplomatic way, so to say. I, I believe I spoke enough about that. I'd like to, just to tell you, I would like to add to what has been said, uh, answer some of the questions. So thank you, Ms. Bilsa, for your question regarding smuggling. Just a few words uh, to uh, like to add to what Mr. Ambassador already mentioned. I would like to emphasize that at this stage, the uh, cooperation between the customs services and the border guard services of, the, of both countries are at the top level now, uh, practically over the last 20 years. So we have very good close cooperation between the above mentioned services. There is the, uh, the ongoing dialogue on a monthly basis at least. And this is very important, which helps us to, uh, to prevent uh, such um, uh, illegal actions. We try to, 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 to put the barrier to the smugglers, you know. And uh, we are talking about the, um, our um, efforts to create our joint uh, checkpoints on the border. 
uh, and already Pervichan, Rastashan, which already exists in the northern parts of our common border or in the southern part. A checkpoint in Palanga, and Mr. Ambassador mentioned that, that that was the place of meeting between President Poroshenko and Prime Minister Philip. This testifies to the fact that both countries with the assistance of the European countries, taking consideration of the um, opposed to European practice and practical experience, they try to create a joint or common checkpoints, and they are working along those lines. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Again, if I may join you in this discussion, or um, I would like to offer a short comment. I would like, first of all, to thank you, thank the audience for a very good um, questions and I would like to add answer to your first question my, my Ms. Bellitzer that I, uh, I indeed think what has been said by Mr. Ambassador uh, to the fact that whoever becomes the next president uh, he has to take consideration the realities even if he has some other visions and the reality is uh, what is called in English constraints there are a lot of uh, kind of limiting or constraining framework which uh, defines or determines this or another stance or position. So I would like to um, to give you an answer in uh, answering your question. I would give you the uh, the, the, the the true to life example of the one of the dip diplomat who put, took part in the uh, five plus two negotiations in Vienna. In coming to Vienna, he found out that uh, he uh, his uh, his suit was uh, suitcase was lost. He approached the uh, uh, lost and found uh, uh, counter. And he said, "Sorry, my suitcase was lost. Has been lost." And he said, "What country are you coming from?" She says, "From Transnistria." She looks through the list of countries. Says there is no such country. So a person a person lost his suitcase. Uh, no, excuse me. Then he said, I'm from Moldova. That means he lost his suitcase, but he acquired his motherland. So there are some constraints, there are some rules and regulations, constraint rules and regulations. So uh, uh, what I'm talking about, we'll see who is going to become the president. The one who don't want to express or voice uh, anything, any specific thought of mine, but I believe that there are uh, a lot of constraints in Moldova to the effect that Moldova actually depends, unfortunately depends uh, from the financial um, assistance, and fortunately uh, depends because uh, they, they, there are a lot of reforms in store for them, and there are some of the things which doesn't make uh, life of the next president easy. This number one. Number two, there is parliament and other bonds and the authorities which have to approve that. And of course we can uh, um, uh, we, we, we can voice a lot of claims uh, regarding the Moldovan parliament, but I believe there is um, uh, there is a lot of democracy for Democrats. Uh, uh, at least my opinion, maybe some people uh, do not agree with me, but they, there is a competition between the political forces. That's why I believe it would be very difficult to adopt uh, some kind of controversial decisions. Decisions. A few um, comments on my part again. And uh, it does not, it no, not the end of the story when the president is elected. If you're talking about Democratic Republic, you have to take into consideration other factors, including who is going to be supported and how uh, the, the person. Um, we have not mentioned here like Lohetniuk, but anyway, uh, there is, you, you know, there is different uh, attitude. Uh, towards the, uh, the let's say the uh, firing. Oh, let's say why 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 one of the candidates actually withdrew uh, his uh, candidate. I mean his name from the candidates. So again, um, uh, there is a political campaign. It's very interesting to follow that campaign, is development. But again, I would like to. To, 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 to draw attention to this kind of in, interpolitical, intrapolitical uh, field of Moldova, uh, speaking about different candidates, presidential candidates. And again, these studies, we are talking about the risks 
and this is I mentioned that this is a risk when uh, when uh, you don't become the president and how this in the maybe can potential change of the vector political vector how it, it will uh, impact the developed relations with Ukraine we were um, uh, taking that in consideration while evaluating the risks for the bilateral relations and the relevant recommendations so the, what to do. So I call upon everybody to have a broader um, vision of the whole picture. Again, speaking about Transnistria, what I would like to add to what has been said by uh, uh, you know, uh, I repeatedly heard that uh, the, the policy of Ukraine changed drastically in uh, 2014 after the after this, they, they, they closed the the land, uh, let's say, and the skies, the so-called uh, resolution 118, which uh, to which uh, Moldova responded negatively, and they accused Ukraine of the, you know this negative attitude. There, so we tried to enhance our control of the border, but this is a, lies within the interests of. Uh, Ukraine, because the escalation of the tension in uh, Transnistria, we are paying attention to that, and we have to respond res uh, accordingly. We are talking about the border guards of Ukraine and other uh, competent uh, agencies, and of course we have to enhance uh, or to increase our uh, presence. Uh, both in the, the indifference spheres, including the political sphere. And one of our recommendations is that maybe the, it's worthwhile in Ukraine to introduce the, uh, the, the office of the Special Envoy of Ukraine dealing with the resettlement of um, the conflicts uh, in the post-Soviet space. You know, in the attitude of the Russian is the same towards Ukraine, towards Moldova and Georgia as well. And, uh, we have all to take all this in consideration and try to resolve this situation by joining our by following our efforts and can coordinate the position of Ukraine. You know, Ukraine is a country which has to say its own agenda. You know how such a huge territory and the available resources, you know, we have to take consideration all the political aspects, etc., etc., but it's high time to uh, work out our own policy, etc., etc., so uh, we... Uh, so if, what happens if that don't come to, uh, as a president? But my, my, my concern is what would happen to the Ukraine diaspora or Russian diaspora in the Moldova, how we have to, to ch how would they change uh, will be changed the presence of Ukraine, Moldova. So those aspects uh, which we have to pay attention to as well, because you could, the ethnic Ukrainians, according to the latest statistics, is 10 to 12 percent of the citizens of Moldova. This is quite a big share, uh, and perhaps uh, Ukraine should be interested so that the Ukrainian national ethnic minority in Moldova uh, remains pro-Ukrainian. We have to do something about that, and uh, uh, which immediately uh, shows our weakness. General speaking of the Kiev policy regarding the uh, Ukraine diaspora, not only in Moldova, elsewhere, we have to to change this policy in the Minister of Education as well. And they mentioned here that we are going to sign the protocol in the near future between uh, the in the educational sphere. But how we're going to do that? What would be the content of this cooperation? We have to think about that. There are a lot of open questions yet, and we have to seriously approach those issues. You know, like you know, given the recommendations, what could be, what steps should be taken along those lines, how to strengthen Ukrainian um, um, presence in Moldova, how it should work with Ukrainian diaspora in Moldova. So not only the change in the uh, external political vector, but there are a lot more other issues and questions which should be seriously approached and taken into consideration in Kiev. Thank you. We still have time for one or two questions. You have a comment or question? Uh, comment or remark? Okay, please. 
Ms. Bellet, sir, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Coming back to the issue whether uh, whether the, uh, the, the, the results of the uh, coming elections will have any effect on our relations. So I would like to remind you the recent scandal in the uh, parliamentary assembles of the uh, Council of Europe and the Georgian delegation did not vote for the position of Ukraine before the Georgian elections. Nobody can allow uh, such elections, uh, such such attitude, because our kind of long-standing historical bridge between the two countries. So we have to take that in consideration. And also coming uh, to the question of Transnistria, you know, for many years, yeah, uh, years there was some kind of a temptation of the pre-European Moldova to uh, to say no to Transnistria because they regard that kind of burden, additional load, and especially if you're talking about the terms and conditions to integrate that area, um, we can. Uh, this has some similarity how they try what they try to do with Ukraine. Uh, to squeeze it into the, you know, some kind of a dialogue. Um, this is very interesting, especially to those who read a uh, very big, uh, detailed interview of the so-called Minister of the Foreign um, uh, Affairs of the so-called Transnistria uh, People Republic. And the, the, the correspondent asked them why they do not recognize uh, DPRL, PR in Ukraine, because you have the similar, the Nagorno Karabakh and Transnistria, everybody recognized each other, and didn't it this way? No. So it, it's, it, it, now it came, um, they, they found out that Transnistria is kind of um, surrounded by the Republic of Moldova, they are more sensitive. Uh, and he said directly, we in no way we would like to uh, to to deteriorate our relationship with ukraine thank you mr ambassador you wanted to respond to okay good uh, good afternoon dear ladies and gentlemen it's my pleasure to find myself in a very professional audience so i would like we, we, we met before, so I would like to, uh, with all respect, I must say that you have uh, wrong information. So I would like to inform everybody uh, present here. The fact which is artificially um, uh, kindled by our, uh, the people who do not uh, wish us good, the, the Georgian Ukraine uh, are strategic partners. What happened in Strasbourg? You know that we also have the elections. We have the first tour of the presidential or the, no, the elections, and we are going to have the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the second uh, round of elections in 50 uh, uh, districts. That's why not all the um, European deputies were present during the last uh, uh, pace uh, uh, meeting. There were no. Free Democrats and Democrats were not represented on the uh, national movement. Um, uh, you, you know, there, there were four deputies present, but you know that there were some in the major, uh, uh, and, uh, and sometimes they are replaced by their deputies. But only only two deputies could um, participate in voting. One of the deputies from the Michta Dream, when they considered the issue of Ukraine, Georgia completely supported all the comments and remarks of the Ukraine delegation. And they supported completely the resolution as a whole. This is a very important decision in, in the committee. During voting, where only two deputies could participate, but for your information, in the uh, Council of Europe there were 324 deputies. For the first re resolution, uh, 78 deputies supported that, and uh, for second resolution, 87. <clears throat> and only two uh, Georgian deputies uh, were against. And, uh, no, you know, nobody said that, on, uh, uh, that uh, the whole countries did not vote for them. Nobody names other countries or other deputies. Just they talk about Georgian deputies. And, you know, in the pro-Russian circles, 
and the TV, etc., etc. This is a very bad situation. Because of the bad communication, when for each country, they consider very important resolution. Each country approaches another country, especially if we are talking about friendly countries. They say, dear Georgians, at 1300 or at 1400 time, there are many different resolutions being considered, not only Ukraine one. So we do expect of you to be present. We do not even ask you. We hope that you come to, to vote for this resolution. Um, the members of our delegation, because of the bad communication, they were did not were not they did nobody told them that the resolution is going to be voted at this specific time, and the and the uh, Swiss uh, uh, Georgian uh, uh, side of friendship, and you know that Switzerland to us is a very important country because in Moscow, as you know, there are three embassies of Abkhazia. Southern Ossetia, their full-fledged embassies, and Georgia is represented through the Swiss embassy. Uh, and my deputy, Georgius Gershvili, was um, actually sent to Moscow. So this is a kind of paradoxical situation. In Georgia, Russia is represented again at the Swiss embassy. Uh, their interest. That's why Switzerland is a very important country to us. Speaking about those two deputies who were not voted because of bad communication. Why so? Because head of your delegation, Mr. Ray, after the elections, um, after the first uh, tour, he, uh, he, he named the, this party, not the party of dream, but the party of nightmare. You know, when uh, the head of the delegation calls the party, the party of the main mayor, how can they approach our delegates and ask them to support your country? But again, this nightmare party supported the Ukraine, the, the committee voted. But again, when you say nightmare, you know, Georgia is, you know, is 16th in, um, in the top 16 country in business. Uh, in current business, when you reach such situation, then you can say that this is a nightmare party. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for your clarification. <clears throat> if some of our speakers, maybe they would like to respond to something which has been said already or what has not been said yet, maybe you'd like to draw attention to something else. If there are no more questions from the audience, then I give the floor to Alina uh, for a short remark, okay? And you know, uh, we also would like to uh, to call upon everybody, special mass media. You know, you have to verify the information. Um, you, you know, maybe sometimes to refrain from some kind of the uh, loud uh, statements, you know, and we respond immediately. For example, Moldova opens uh, the second front of, against us in the commercial war, whatever else. When you st when you start to look into the matter, you can you, you become um, you persuaded there are no grounds for that. But this actually entails a lot of negative or deterioration of the image and the creation of some of the um, negative stereotypes. And again, we are talking about the bilateral cooperation between Ukraine and Moldova, how the, we had um, the development of our relations. Well, it's better to, to see the, the now, uh, the positive moments, and they had not the introduction of the quote, as you know, uh, like it happened in, in, uh, in May, a number of different articles were carried. So we are talking about the real figures, what kind of second front we are talking about. But this is something which can um, uh, deteriorate our bilateral uh, cooperation. We have to think, all of us, we have to create a different agenda, agenda of our Cooperation again uh, between the two countries. We are talking about the um, the uh, PSA or the interparliamentary cooperation, in which develops in a positive way. And uh, and uh, this is uh, emphasized by the Polog Gurian, who is the head of the Ukraine Moldova mm, group in the Vikhovna Rada. And at this stage, everything uh, is developing you know, uh, very positively. You know, and I hope that this kind of interparliamentary and um, cooperation will develop not only in bilateral basis, but the international platform as well. And, and I would like to thank everybody for 
for the uh, for for the comments she provided and uh, some information provided for me when I was uh, writing this material. A few words. Yeah, I do uh, echo what Elena has said. We have a lot of common between our two countries, and most important to pay attention to those things which unite us, um, bring us closer together and allow us to move ahead and make progress and we have whenever, whenever possibly to avoid what we call the the uh, the, the, the acute angles which sometimes um, uh, actually deteriorate our relationship. Again, I would like to thank you and for the presentation of your study for the um, uh, Institute of World um, uh, policy. Also, would like to thank all our panelists for the interest shown in you and for your comment. Of course, our audience uh, for the fact that you found uh, the, uh, the uh, time in your a lot of time, slot in your big busy schedule. Come here. I would like to remind you the next uh, meeting will be dedicated to audit Ukraine, Poland, Ukraine, uh, Lithuania, and Ukraine. Uh, Japan. So we are uh, looking forward to see you next time. Thank you.